What's up, YouTube? Uh, so this is a rabbinical school update. Uh, as everyone knows, I'm in rabbinical school at RSI, and it's a distance learning program. And people have been asking me, hey, Patrick, what books have you had to read for rabbinical school? Now, I have to read a ton of books, but one of the things that I had to do was pick six books from a huge reading list, read those, write book reports, basically, and um, included in the book report... Um, I had to write basically a thesis about how I would use that particular book or the information presented or whatever the case may be. So I wanted to show you the books that I've had to read so far. Um, now this is in addition to all of the different um, uh, copies of the Chumash that I have to read um, and uh, different kinds of Siddurim and all sorts of other things. But this is just the preliminary reading list. Um, so. The first book I read was this Martin Buber book uh, right here. This is The Ten Rungs, and I loved this book. It was fantastic. Um, as you can see, there's like lots of margin notes and things like that. Um, it's a collected series of Hasidic stories um, pulled together by themes. So you have themes like service, teaching, love, good and evil, uh, things of that nature. And it was really great. I really was able to connect a lot uh, to Hasidism through this book in ways that I hadn't before. I've tried reading Tanya, and it just never really did anything for me. Um, but this uh, has helped a lot. Um, the other few other books I've had to read. Um, this is a really cool book. The Reform Movement put this out. This is basically an at-home Siddur and sort of, it's like a Siddur and a rabbi manual, like like a lay Havruta leader manual combined together. Um, it's got lots of interesting stuff in it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it's like life-changing, but if you need something like this for at-home ritual, I mean, it's a good book. Um, I guess what I learned from this book was, you know, different ways of approaching at-home ritual. Uh, quite frankly, though, uh, going on a website like Ritual Well or Pila Palm um, or the Punctora website, you'll find basically the same information. So it's not, you know, that incredible. Um, I had to read two books for an interfaith course, um, and the idea with my rabbinical schools, they're really focused on interfaith dialogue and understanding the role of other faiths that come in contact with Judaism. So I chose two books that I thought were kind of appropriate for the Jewish community. Uh, the first is this one called The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell, um, and I had actually read this book before, and it's one of my favorite books. Um, but it basically talks about universalism and uh, mythology and themes of life and, and all of that. It's a really, really cool book, and it's an easy read, too, because it's actually a script uh, from an interview that Joseph Campbell did with Bill Moyers. And what I gathered from this that was fantastic was, um, and this is a criticism of Joseph Campbell, that uh, he did not understand Jewish spirituality very well. He was uh, a Catholic, uh, raised Catholic, um, and his sense of God was this very sort of uh, primitive, tribal type of personality. Um, and then mythology helped him to release himself from that. Um, and that's the perspective he comes from. And unfortunately, then, he interprets Judaism through that Catholic filter. And it doesn't quite work right. Um, but why I liked the book and why I felt like it really is going to help me as a rabbi is that a lot of Jews filter Judaism through Christianity uh, because their understanding of Judaism, if you live in the United States, is as an opposite to Christianity as opposed to something in and of itself. Great example, a woman, uh, I was teaching a class once and I talked about Satan and a woman said, wait, we believe in Satan? So it's interesting that, you know, there's things like that where people are like, wait, that's what we believe? Um, and so, Seeing how Joseph Campbell understood Judaism, I think actually will help me help Jews who understand Judaism in a non-Jewish way, just as a result of living in the United States. Another part of my interfaith um, reading that I had to do was the Dhammapada. Uh, this is a Buddhist book. It's actually very, very similar to this book right here, the Buber book. Uh, they're structured very similarly, um, and they, they read in a similar kind of tone. 
Um, and what was interesting about that book, obviously, uh, is the whole Jubu phenomenon. Uh, that's the reason why I chose the book. It was either that or Jew and the Lotus. And I chose directly this one because Jew and the Lotus is really about the story of these rabbis going to meet the Dalai Lama. It's not as much about Jews in America and in other countries practicing Buddhism. So I wanted to read a book that was really about Buddhism and to try to think about what it was that Jews are attracted to. So uh, that's why I read that. Uh, I had to read a Haggadah. Actually, I had to read several Haggadot. Uh, this was the one that I picked as my primary text. This is the one that the conservative movement put out. And it's okay. It's nothing spectacular. Um, but the thing about it that is interesting is that they have this, like, Gemara-style series of notes on either side right here and uh, right here with all kinds of different Talmudic writings and um, all sorts of insights, which is kind of cool. Uh, it makes the Haggadah a little bit more than just a set of rituals. Now, you can't really write a book report on a Haggadah, so what I had to do along with that was to uh, compare and contrast other Haggadot. So I used <laughs> a series of Haggadot, Maxwell House from 2011, Publix from 2007, Publix again from, I think, 2009, um, Another Maxwell House, I think this one's from the 80s, and then this one, this one is fantastic. This is the Union Haggadah, the Reform Haggadah from 1922. It is crazy, and the artwork in here is just spectacular. And I love, like, um, as an example in this book, it has um, sheet music so that you can play, like, hymnals, Jew Jewish hymnals, as they would have called them back then, um, on piano at your home, because that would have made perfect sense. People had pianos in their houses. So that was pretty cool. And then the last book that I read, you can't really see what this is, but this is uh, More Derech. It's um, the Conservative Rabbi's Manual. It's a two-volume. This is just one of the volumes. Um, and... I mean, it was okay. I think the thing that I, I liked about the conservative rabbi's manual was the fact that it kind of showed me what the conservative movement is really about, and it made me question how we do Jewish rituals. Um, to what degree do we feel like, as ritual officiants, that we are in charge of imparting a certain level of Jewishness uh, into a ritual versus having a ritual that brings people into a sense of communion uh, with the divine? Um, and that that was really what I gained from the conservative um, Rabbi's manual is that there's this emphasis on we need to bring, you know, Torah into the service. We need to bring Hebrew into the service. We need to bring this, that, and the other, these priorities that I guess make sense within conservative Judaism of conserving Jewish tradition and placing it into these ritual contexts. But um, I guess my question is, to what degree does that actually work? Um, or are you just sort of overdoing things to the point that people kind of lose an experience of it. And, and that's a very subjective thing. And I think that sometimes More Derech really does a great job. And then sometimes for me personally, if someone was doing these rituals with me, um, it would kind of miss the boat. So those are the books that I've had to read. Now, of course, there's like a million others. Um, uh, uh, it's going really well. Um, so I'm taking two programs at once. I have RSI and then I have the um, Para Rabbi program, which is two unique programs, but the para-rabbi program is actually sort of what's helping me to be able to do the rabbi program. So the <clears throat> funny thing, though, is that I'm like halfway done with the para-rabbi program, and I'm like 15% of the way through um, the, uh, the rabbinical program, so I actually need to catch up on my previous requirements so that I'll really be able to do a better job of the things that I have to do in the rabbinical program. So I have things I really need to catch up on. Um, for the para-rabbi program, I need to um, have a conservative style uh, Shabbat uh, and Havdalah service. I need to do um, you know, a Shachrit, a Mincha, and a Mariv service, and these are all in Hebrew, so I can't, you know, renewal and reconstructionize everything. Um, I have to be able to really kind of keep it together. So, um, you know, it's a matter of memorizing things and, and being able to read things well. Um, so, 
I'm trying to catch up on that so that I can then dump that into my rabbinical work. So that's what I got. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're interested in knowing more about the things that I'm doing or my reading list, send me an email, patrickapunctora.org. Take care.